Hello Stalkers and welcome to this new updated guide on Warfare Mode. Warfare Mode is a unique mode designed in Stalker Anomaly. It features a unique war system for territory and power across the zone, where factions will fight each other and occupy each other's factions' territories, and gain access to better weapons and manpower. The main goal is to capture as many bases as possible and to keep them yours while your faction keeps expanding and conquering. These locations that you have to capture or defend are called smarts and they can be anything from a base, a territory and even resources. Bases allow you to buy and recruit stalkers and some factions will also allow you to even buy air support in the form of a helicopter, while resources will give your faction access to better equipped stalkers. In the PDA it will show you who has the most bases and once your faction is on top or all the other factions are gone then you basically win. To play warfare mode normally you have to start a new game with warfare mode ticked on. But before I start showing you how to play first we need to change some settings. That's because the settings for warfare mode are really bad and meant for fast paced gameplay. First go to the settings menu and go to the zone settings, from there you'll find warfare settings. When you are in this menu look at the top right part of the screen. You will see a present where you can choose slow or fast mode. By default the game will have your warfare mode set to fast, which isn't very good and it makes warfare mode a nightmare to play. So first thing you want is to set the present to slow. When you set it to slow make sure you press apply, this will apply the new settings for your game and for warfare mode. Now we can also modify some specific settings to make warfare mode a bit more fun. The first option is all out war, this will make all the factions fight each other, loners will no longer be friendly with freedom or duty, and all other factions will pretty much do the same thing. Now if you don't use this option, Warfare mode will resort to the normal mode which is factions will have friends like in story mode. Now I prefer using all out war because it makes Warfare mode a bit more challenging and a lot more intense. Random stalker chance and random mutant chance, these are options that spawn random amount of stalkers and mutants at the start of the game. You can increase them or just leave them as they are, but you will see a lot more activity from the start if you set them to high. Able auto capture will allow you to automatically capture a zone when you have cleared it from your enemies. You can also reduce auto capture wait time. I recommend you to set it to at least 10 minutes, which is about 30 seconds of real life waiting time to capture the zone you have cleared. You also have fog of war, which means that you won't know which bases have been captured by who until you go close to them. I usually leave this option off as I want to know exactly what is going on around me, but there is a small disadvantage when you turn this option off. NPCs from other factions will plan where to attack and how to attack these bases, and loners are very susceptible to this, especially at the start of the game. So you need to be prepared and defend Corden from the military at once when you turn off this option in warfare settings. I'm going to skip some of these settings below as they are quite obvious what they do. Make sure that the option hide smart is off. Smarts are the locations where you can capture these sectors, so it makes sense to leave them on so you can see them and know where they are. I also like to turn on hide unfriendly squads because I don't want to know where the enemies are exactly on my PDA. And speaking of PDA, there is a small tiny issue if you're playing uh, warfare mode, especially when you're playing loners, as you see when you upgrade your PDA or you find an upgraded PDA, you actually know where the other factions are, so it gives you a huge advantage. So I recommend you to just throw away the upgraded PDA if you find it. Down here you can adjust the prices of recruiting stalkers and you can also adjust the price of the helicopter.
Support money reward allow you to gain rubles when you are eliminating other stalkers. I like to set this to 250 as you will gain a few coins for doing your job. In warfare mode you can take those small jobs from the NPCs, but sometimes you might have to focus more on attacking and defending the territories. Another option you need to set is the minimum and maximum monster respawn time. Don't make the minimum too low or you can overwhelm the zone with mutants. You also have the Spurge Zone option which has a chance to remove captured bases from stalkers when an emission occurs, but I like to turn this off, but feel free to experiment with this option as much as you want. Now the biggest problem with Vanilla Warfare Mode is that Monolith are very unbalanced and they will win in just a few hours with the default fast present on, but we can fix that by reducing the amount of men they have in their squads. Well stalkers, we are halfway through this video, so make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you're new to my content. I do a lot of stalker anomaly videos and guides, and I love testing new mods and show them to the stalker community. So just under general settings, you can individually change each faction's setting, which is really helpful. This is what I like to do to keep warfare mode nice and balanced. I like to change the stalker squad group to give the underdog factions, like, like loners, a bit more manpower while reducing the squad groups for factions like Monolith and Mercs. We go to the stalker faction and we scroll down halfway, you will find minimum and maximum squad count. I set the minimum to 3 and the max to 5. Then I press apply to all, which is very important. And then I press apply to save this option. This applies the settings to all the factions. Then I go to freedom, scroll down halfway again, and I set the minimum to two and the maximum to three. I do the same thing with duty, just to keep everything balanced. Minimum to two and maximum to three. Clear Sky gets 1 to 4, and Military, Mercs, and Monolith, and also Unisig only get 1 minimum and 3 maximum man. Now make sure to press apply for these options to be saved. Doing this balances warfare mode a lot, and the underdog factions don't get wiped out so easily. Those are the settings that I like to use when I play vanilla. Now when you start playing warfare mode, you can use your PDA to actually command troops and even buy squads from the bases. All you have to do is right click on a smart that is a base and then that will allow you to buy squads and even call for a helicopter. If you don't see that option, it's because you don't have enough money yet. You can also right click on a squad to command them to move and attack a smart. And you can tell them to also follow you. You can also become the commander of your faction, which allows you to plan attacks and send stalkers to defend the areas that you desire. I usually let the game manage and command my stalkers, but if you like RTS games, this is a great option for you. It is very important that you understand that you can just jump from one part of the zone to the next. Bases can only send troops to the next connected location, so if loners want to send troops to Rostock, first they need to own a base in garbage. It is a progressive step-by-step -step conquering system. Now there is a mod that improves warfare mode by a lot, and it has been out there for quite some time. It is called Warfare A-Life mod, and it works on Anomaly 1.51, 1.52 and even 1.53.
One of the biggest features of Warfare A Life Mode is that you can call for reinforcement when you have captured one of the smarts. By just opening your PDA, your character will send a message to the nearest base to reinforce that area. But this option only works for factions that are military, for example Duty and Merc. Also has a great feature where if a friendly NPC dies, it can be replaced by another. Which is very helpful, because technicians sometimes can end up being killed in an invasion. Another amazing feature of Warfare A Life Mode is that you can play Warfare Mode and Story Mode at the same time. Which is crazy if you think about it. And of course, you want to turn off All Out War option if you're going to play Story Mode with Warfare Mode on. Warfare A Life also increases the performance of the game, at least when you're playing Warfare Mode, that is. You can also pair this mod with another great mod, like the mod Warfare Traders Ignore Combat, which is in the name, traders will ignore combat and therefore they won't die if they get invaded. I hope you guys enjoyed this video about Warfare Mode, if you have any questions about Warfare Mode make sure to leave them here in the comments below. Next time I'm going to show you some of the best mods to pair with Warfare Mode, so make sure to like and subscribe and follow my channel. Bye and thank you for watching.